Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Mr. Berger awake yet? What's the matter, Harold? It's the chauffeur. He refuses to get up. Says he has the grip. I'm afraid Mexico doesn't agree with him. Poor Anton. Is it serious? Well, he does have temperature. I took it myself. You mean he won't be able to drive Mr. Berger across the border today? He says he can't. His fever's only 101. You'd better take this into the boss and break the news to him. Oh, uh, couldn't you? No. I was taking dictation until 3 o'clock this morning. As far as I'm concerned, I'm sleeping late today. In fact, I'm still in bed. Good morning. Uh, uh, Madeline. Uh, well, all right. I'll tell him. But don't desert me, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Thank you. Uh, I could do without that long drive to Los Angeles, I assure you. Uh, Madeline, uh, the second act. The scene between David and his captain. Yes. Small change. Yes. David says, we overrated him, and so on. Change that. Uh, David, men are all much the same size, but like mountains, the ones closest to us overshadow the others. And then the rest of the speech. Congratulations, Paul. Madeline says it's a great play. Oh, it is not. And even if it were, it would only be so when I'm dead, Madeline. Until then, it will be a witty Parisian satire filled with Gallic cynicism and delightfully French. It will run eight months in New York, a year in London, and two weeks in Paris. Not too bad, is it? I'll settle for that. Will you be able to finish typing it today? Yes, Paul. Good. Then uh, you can take the plane this evening, I wrote. It's all right. Anything of interest in the mail? The reviews from England on the last book. Oh, who wrote the review for The Spectator? Peterson. Peterson? <laughs> He's an idiot. It's a very favorable review. Well... A cow can tell the difference between grain and chaff, but it's still a cow. Well, tell Anton to put them in my bag. I'll look at them later. What's the matter? Anton, I'm afraid he's not feeling very well. What do you mean he's not feeling very well? But he has to drive me to Los Angeles this morning. He has the grip. Harold took his temperature. It was 101. I thought perhaps I could drive you and take the plane to New York from there. How can Madeleine finish typing the play here and hand it to you in Los Angeles? And here he is expecting the play in New York tomorrow. This is really annoying. When do you expect to have the play ready? By four o'clock. Four o'clock? But it's only the last act you have to do. But you made so many revisions in all three acts. When did I accept the invitation to this writer's conference? Three months ago. Why? They're planning the whole conference around you. Oh, yes. I suppose I have to go even if I have to drive myself. Could I take the script to New York? You think you're competent to negotiate the contract with Helia? No, 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 it's decided now. I'll drive across that cursed desert alone. Shall I pack your bag? No, thank you. Harold, will you do that, please? Yes. For ten years, I've been asking you to type up your dictation as you go along. But it was so late before you... And this kind of thing would not happen. It's only a simple, mechanical job, after all. I'm sorry. So am I, believe me. Anyone can type, Madeleine. I've marked the route, Paul. Thank you. While I'm away, tell Anton to start packing up everything. I'm getting tired of this place. There's one question, Paul. I'll be seeing the magazine people in New York about the serial rights on the new book. Well, that's your job. Make the best terms you can. Be careful and have a good trip. Thank you, but I expect it will be hot, tedious and exhausting. Goodbye. I sometimes wonder if the privilege of working for a great man like Paul Berger is really worth it. 
still, he is a great man. Men are all much the same size. But like mountains, the ones closest to us overshadow the others. Peter, please. Si, senor. Just coffee, please. But you don't understand. It isn't like it is in your country. You can say that again. Anyone try to pull a trick like this back home? It's not a trick. If you think I'm lying, go and talk to your boss. Go and talk to the padre. My boss? Why, oh, I'd laugh his head off. He won't laugh when they find you dead. Oh, drop that, will you? I know what you want. You think I want it. I would sooner have cut my tongue out than asked you. I hate you. If that's the way you feel about it, why don't you leave me alone? No, Bob. Cinquenta pesos. How far is it to Mexicali from here? Oh, it's a long way, many kilometers. Who knows how many? Thank you. Excuse me. Are you going to Mexicali? Yes. Oh, if you could take me to where the road turns off to my father's ranch, it, it would be very nice. Uh, how far is that? Eighty kilometers. I came here on the bus this morning, but there isn't another one until tonight. All right. Thank you. Very serious. 27 miles and you haven't said one word. I'm sorry. You like to talk? Yes. You are a salesman? No. A mining engineer? No. I'm a writer. Ah, <laughs> professor. Then you are only vacationing in Mexico. I've been living in San Felipe for a few months, working. You have the students there? <laughs> I'm not a professor. I write books, plays. My name is Paul Berger. Anita Teresa Sunsolo de Camera. Am I to understand that you've never heard of me? We do not know very many Americans. It's not me, but my father is very old fashioned. Well, I'm an American citizen now, but my plays have been produced all over the world. In Mexico City? No, I'm not sure, but uh, in London, Paris, and of course, Broadway. Broadway? Yes, Broadway. You don't know what that is? It's a, a song. <laughs> no, it's not a song. You know where Paris is? Oh, of course. Paris is the capital of France. It's very old. Almost as old as Mexico City. Older? No. I was born there. Hmm. The city of Paris was founded by Yucca Payne, 987. Tenochtitlan, that is Mexico City. <laughs> you must not think I was not properly educated because of the way we met. I was a student in the convent in Santa Ana for seven years. I apologize. That young man you, you were with at the restaurant, uh, isn't he an American? Bob. Yes, he is an American. And what does your father think of him? My father does not know him. He has never seen him. My brothers have never seen him either. They don't even know his name. Your wife is in San Felipe. I'm not married. Never? No. Where do you live in America? Everywhere. I travel. I find a place I like and I stay two or three months. You have no home? No, not really. 
And you are not lonely? Oh, of course not. Since I was 22, when my first play was produced in Paris, everywhere I went, that is until today, I've been somewhat known. There were always new friends, invitations, and, uh, well, you know, yes, yes. Yes, sometimes I've been lonely. So the turning to my father's ranch is uh, there on the right. Oh, how far is that? 18 kilometers. My father is not rich, but our family is respected over the whole state. You will see the house in a minute. Ever since my mother died, I, I have managed the house for my father and brothers. <laughs> Even they say I'm a good manager. I am not extravagant. Here you are. May I ask you something? Certainly. If you loved someone, do you think... What? God would forgive you whatever you did to save him. Well, uh, many great men have thought so. Do you like me? Well, yes, I like you very much. You don't think I am unattractive? <laughs> no, on the contrary, I think you're very pretty. Will you please come in? Uh, I want my father to meet you. Uh, this is the man? Yes, Father. This is the man. Carlos de Camara. These are my sons, Diego and Jose. Welcome to my house. Why, thank you. My name is Paul Berger. I met your daughter. Yes, I know. Anita, you may wait together in there. Yes, Father. Please. But I don't... Please. Anita, what is it? What's the matter? What's this all about? I would like to know what's going on here. My father said for you to wait in there. Anita, stop it, stop it. Now tell me, what does all this mean? I had to. I had to, they would have killed him. Your brothers? They were going to kill him last night. At and they managed to stop them, but now... But who were they going to kill? Bob! You mean that young American who was with you at the restaurant? Yes. Well, but what does this have to do with me? Well, they think... Yes, of course. You told them. You told them I was this man, this Bob. Yes. And now they're going to kill me, I suppose. No. Good. Not if you marry me. What? My father is sent for the Padre. Please, please. Now, do sit down. Now, from the beginning. You must not be angry with no, me. No, no, I'm not angry. You said yourself if you loved someone. And you're very much in love with this Bob. Yes, yes, of course. Well, who is he? Where did you meet him? Last month, I, I was staying with my aunt in Hermosillo. Bob was working for an engineering company that a friend introduced us. I could not invite Bob to my aunt's house because she knew he was an American and, and she wouldn't approve. So we met secretly. Yes? We used to drive down to the Gulf in Bob's car. One night the road was washed out and we couldn't get back until almost morning. We didn't do anything wrong, but naturally it was a terrible disgrace. My aunt found out he was an American and sent me home. And then my father questioned me. 
Why didn't you tell your father the truth? That it was nothing. Oh, you're like Bob. You don't understand either. It is my father's honor that I have disgraced his name. Is that why your brothers want to kill that young man? They say it is their duty to kill him. I see. I refused to tell them his name, but I knew they could find him. But at last, my father agreed to let me talk to Bob alone. I thought if I could make Bob understand... He would marry you. But I couldn't make him understand. I was too proud and too ashamed. And it made me stupid and clumsy. And then I was angry. And I even told him I hated him. Well, it's like a chapter out of the last century. Well, Anita, I'm sorry. I, I do wish I could help you in some way, but you cannot expect me to pretend that I am Bob, even for you. You're not going to refuse to marry me? I must. No, my brothers will kill you. Not if I explain who I am. I told you, they do not know Bob's name. But I can prove that I am Paul Berger. There are papers in my suitcase, contracts, my passport. Well, there will be no need for papers. You have already told my father your name. He will give it to the padre when he comes. Oh, just a minute. Yes, of course. You knew all along who I was, didn't you? The first time you spoke to me outside that restaurant. That's when you made up your mind to bring me here. No, no. In the car, at the turn-off, I, I closed my eyes and I thought, I'm not going to ask him to take me any further. But if he does of his own free will, it will be a sign. Stop it, will you? Stop this stupid pretense. I'm not a fool. How much do you want? How much? Yes, how much? It was all very well planned. I congratulate you and your... your brothers. All right. I will pay. How much? In Mexico, it is not the man who pays for the wedding. It is the family of the girl, and, and you will have to give me nothing. I told you, we are not rich, but... I will have a dowry, and... there is my mother's jewelry, and silver, and... and I have dresses and linens. I will never ask you for anything. Never. I'm sorry. Then it is true, isn't it? The whole story. But, Anita, you must understand, I can't help you. I shall have to tell your father the truth. That I met you this morning for the first time. Oh, no, please. But I must. Then you will force me to tell my father that you are lying, that you have changed your mind and don't want to marry me after all. You would do that? If you force me to. And my father will believe me, not you. Anita, you have been brought up to believe, haven't you, that marriage is the most important step in your life. It's forever. Yes. Then how can you go through this mockery of marrying a complete stranger? It will not be a mockery. I will be a good wife to you. I will do everything I can to make you happy. But you, you know nothing about me. And you, you're a child. Do you think I would make you happy? I don't care about myself. I would sooner have to be unhappy the rest of my life than know that Bob was killed because I was too stupid and too proud to make him understand. You believe that now, but what kind of a life do you think you would have with me? All you know is this place, this uh, desert. You would be lost in my world. Clever, selfish people who would make fun of you. Always new places, traveling all the time. Then it will be good for you to have a home. How can I make you understand? I'm not like Bob. Also, I'm not an engineer. I'm a writer. I live in a world that you would never understand, a world of pretense where the stories I make up are the only things that are true for me. My grandfather did nothing either, except play the piano, and, and my grandmother did not mind. And if I still refuse to marry you? I don't want them to kill you. But you would let them. 
If I had to, to save Bob. Save Bob? How would it save Bob? Now, Anita, please, think, think a little. If I disappeared, it would be in the papers. There would be a search. They would trace me right here. And they would uh, question your father. No one would question my father around here. And by then, Bob will be safe out of the country. Bob, Bob, is that all that matters to you? I love him. Well, there are other people in the world besides you. People would feel a great loss if I were killed. Is there someone who loves you very much? Hmm? What? Well, I, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, uh, if you knew that I was, uh, I was somebody very important, like, uh, oh, I don't know, like, uh, like the president of Mexico. Bob is more important to me than the president of Mexico or any man in the world. I told you I love him. Like mountains, the ones closest to us overshadow the others. Very true, Mr. Berger. Very true. You love him so much that you are willing to do anything to save his life. Even marry another man. Yes. I promise you, I will never see him again. Have you thought that I might marry you and then desert you? Yes. Very strange girl. I wouldn't have believed when I left Saint Felipe this morning that there was anything in the world that could astonish me. Well, of course, I didn't know you then. The father has arrived. There's a young man with him. Anita. Bob. Anita, I'm sorry. I talked to the Padre the way you told me to. Oh, Anita, I love you so much. Uh, Anita! Father, this is Robert Grayson. How do you do, sir? Welcome to my house. Now, will you please explain? Diego! The American with the little Palomino. I didn't know you were Anita's brother. Robert and I met one morning when we were riding together. We raced back to the highway and Diego won. Oh, oh but by very little. Oh, this is my brother, Jose. Anita, will you please explain? This is the man I'm going to marry, Father. It was impossible to explain before. Who are you? My name is Paul Berger. You have told me your name. Why did you represent yourself as my daughter's fiancé? I did not intend to deceive you, sir. Mr. Berger drove me here from the village. On the way, your daughter explained that she was going to be married today, but that it was impossible for her fiancé to get here until this afternoon. I was afraid, Father, that if I came back alone, you would be angry. I knew you would not understand that Bob could not help it. So I suggested that perhaps I could help until Mr. Grayson arrived. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Well, goodbye, Anita. I'm sure you will be very happy. And believe me, I shall never forget you. Never. And I'm sure there will be many times when I'm traveling, staying in hotels, that I will think of this place. And I shall feel perhaps a little regret that this was not our house, after all. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bob. Congratulations. You are getting a very remarkable girl. Goodbye. Goodbye. So you're Paul Berger. The Paul Berger. Ha <laughs> ha.